As I was flying through Space Engine and discovering new things here, I've discovered a really interesting planetary nebula. Let's actually take a look at it. So this has actually been a pretty good month for the astronomy uh, astronomical community because for the first time ever, we have actually seen an actual supernova happening in real time. We've seen the shock that it creates and we've seen the increase in brightness. This is the first time we were able to record this using a telescope and here we're talking about Kepler Space Telescope and we are actually really really excited because this will give us a lot more uh, details and a lot more information about how supernova actually occur. Now this is not a supernova, this is actually just a planetary nebula from uh, a probably a much smaller star that may have actually had a nova but even if we look for a supernova in Space Engine or really anywhere else, we'll only see the after effects. We'll see the expanded nebula, we'll see a lot of other effects, but we won't really see a star exploding at this moment right now. So let's actually talk a little bit more about this and explore this idea using Universe Sandbox 2. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> And let's actually use uh, Universe Sandbox 2 to try to recreate the supernova that the scientists may have seen um, somewhere really, really far away. As a matter of fact, this was actually in a completely different galaxy, about 1.2 billion light years away from us. This is actually relatively far in uh, space terms, and this is not exactly what they saw. I'm going to try to recreate uh, this particular supernova relatively realistically, just so you get an idea of what we've observed. So, uh, just like this one here, this was a Type 2 supernova that essentially um, had a star um, reach its end of life where it's sort of on the last legs and it has no more energy left to try to sustain the nuclear reaction on the inside. It basically ran out of a lot of materials, but this star was actually very large. It was, it was a super, super large red giant a little bit smaller than uh, infamous Betelgeuse. So this is Betelgeuse. Uh, just to give you a comparison, I'm going to place or show you what the star, uh, what, what our sun looks like uh, in, in comparison. So there is our sun, very, 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 very tiny. This is essentially what Earth would look like next to our sun. So this is essentially sun next to Betelgeuse. And so to try to simulate this particular um, supernova, I decided I'm going to take Betelgeuse and convert it to a star known as KSN 2011D. This is essentially uh, what this star may have looked like, oops, I accidentally renamed it, um, what it may look like in real life. So this star is actually about twice the size of the actual KSN 2011D. The actual KSN was about 500 radii um, of sun, but this one is 950. The problem is this, if I actually reduce this right now, it will change a lot of the other parameters and will not make this star... Uh, as realistic as it is right now. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase its age until it goes supernova and we'll see what actually happens. Now, what happens during the supernova is really interesting. So here is an actual uh, real video of what we saw. So the star, and this is by the way courtesy of space.com, a website that provides a lot of really awesome information about space. Uh, so the star was, uh, you know, right near its um, end of its life about 1.2 billion years ago. And when this happens, um, the, the material on the inside was mostly iron and the star was no longer able to support its own um, nuclear reaction and so it started to collapse and as it collapsed it created a lot more energy and uh, then, let's actually just demonstrate this visually by doing this, I'm gonna start increasing the age of the sun uh, or, or of the star and uh, try to make it go supernova if we can. Okay, <laughs> that was a little bit too fast. I'm not entirely sure what just happened here. Um, it suddenly changed to a blue star. That's not exactly what should have happened. Let's try this again. We're going to change this to millions of years. And here you go. So the, uh, interestingly, this star just went through different phases there and became a blue star. Um, but you can see, there you go. It's turning into a red giant again. And... Excellent. So now this is actually a supernova and you'll see it uh, coming toward us in a few seconds, I think, because it says Nova Remnant. So it looks like it went supernova. Now this this was unfortunately not a red giant, so this was more of a blue giant, uh, but I'm not sure why exactly this happened. We, we can actually use another star to try to demonstrate this. Uh, let's see what, we, what happens after a few minutes here. And right there you can kind of see uh, the supernova um, shockwave coming out. So. And basically what you just witnessed was that shock um, uh, effect. So this was the actual shock wave or shock breakout as it's called. 
And now, uh, as the brightness started increasing, you'll start seeing this sort of wave of material coming out. So this is the actual supernova material that increases the brightness dramatically. Now, all of this took about 20 minutes or so. And so for those 20 minutes, the uh, telescope was actually observing all of this and the brightness of the star first spiked dramatically during the, the actual uh, shock breakout and then started to increase in a linear fashion when all of the stuff started to come out of the star and increase its luminosity dramatically. Now, what's, what's left on the inside in this case would most likely be either a neutron star or a black hole, uh, but probably a neutron star. And um, so this was essentially the end of the life of this particular uh, star. And you can see Okay, so there we go. So because we were actually able to observe this type of uh, um, shockwave effect and this type of uh, sudden increase in brightness, we will not be able to investigate supernova in a lot more detail because we've never really seen this. We, we've never been able to see um, this happening in real real time. And uh, somewhere around this time, we, we actually saw another supernova uh, of a, a star close to this star. And the thing is, uh, there was no uh, breakout shock. Uh, for some reason, the shock that you just saw disappear was not actually there, and uh, the investigators think that it was probably because there was a lot of other gas in the vicinity that sort of blocked it. So, no, this shock seems to be not always seen, and this is really interesting that um, we were able to actually detect it. So now we can analyze and see what happens in these stars as they sort of go through their life cycle, and why some of them actually have such a bright shock effect, and some of them may not have it. And uh, that second star that didn't have a shock um, was known as KSN 2011A, and it's about 300 times the radius of the Sun um, in comparison to the star that we saw that had a shock effect, which was 500 times the radius. So it's, uh, it's sort of like almost twice smaller in, in, in radius than uh, the star that actually produced a shock effect. But there's still kind of a mystery to uh, these results, and I guess the mystery is that only one of these stars, the bigger one, had this observable shock of effect, and it's very uh, interesting to find out why we didn't actually see it from the smaller star. But I guess the good thing here is that uh, all our mathematical models were finally sort of um, proved, and this is ex exactly what we've predicted in the mathematical models so far. And this is the so-called Type II supernova, where you essentially get um, a very, very sort of powerful explosion uh, with a shock effect and also followed by a sudden increase in brightness. And uh, all of these predictions came true when we were able to observe it in, in a galaxy relatively far from us. But you may also kind of wonder, why are we even studying these supernovae? Why are they so important? Well, one of the reasons is because all of the heavy elements in the universe, including all of the elements in your body, uh, specifically elements that are heavier than iron, uh, actually come from these supernova explosions. Uh, so, for example, things like silver, nickel, copper um, in, in Earth, but also uh, materials that are present pretty much everywhere around you, and, you know, including your body, of course, came from these explosive deaths of stars. So, a long time ago, there was a huge explosion somewhere in the vicinity of our planet, uh, or our, our star, I guess, before our star was born, and this explosion produced a supernova like this, and that eventually created our star, then created our Earth, and then obviously created you. So these supernova are essentially the origin of everything. They are origin of life, obviously, they are also origin of you and me, and of course they are also responsible for producing a lot of really interesting materials um, in our galaxy and in the universe. And that's of course why we want to study them so much and why we're so interested in, in uh, trying to figure out how all of this happens, how uh, supernova actually uh, creates stars afterwards, and how we can possibly use this to learn more about the universe in the future. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about. This was a pretty interesting discovery and it's kind of interesting that we were able to see the supernova uh, flash for the first time and we were also able to see a black hole in the optical light as well, a video that I talked about uh, a few days ago. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to share and subscribe. Don't forget to like this and leave a comment if you have something really awesome to say. I'll see you guys in the next video and here comes the disappearance of our supernova. Game you later, bye bye.